Hey there, so I did the MIM program from EREC Business School five years ago and it brought me to a place of financial independence at a job where I felt that I'm thriving. And this entire journey started with two things, getting an admission to this college that will get me to my dream job and arranging for the fees. On the admission side, it's dependent on your profile and the aptitude test score. You need to submit this. And then there's an interview after which they will decide whether or not they want to go ahead and give you a seat. And then the money part comes in. You've already read the title, so it's no surprise for you that my GMAT score wasn't the best. And while this can limit you, you should play more to your strengths and not to your weaknesses. So the GMAT score compensation is going to be the topic of this video. And I'll also share my admission experience and a couple of tips on how you could improve your chances of getting in to a business school. In France, first things first, you need to be comfortable with using Google. Right? If you're watching this video, you're already having the step in the right direction. I used Quora a lot back in the day. And when it comes to the scholarship part of the things, I found out which scholarships exist for Indian students and who has got it. Then I tried to look at their profile if they had a LinkedIn presence. And if not, I would just reach out to them online. Out of every 30 people I reached out to, one person would respond. But yeah, the goal was really to nail what are they doing right that I'm doing wrong. As I said earlier, my weak spot in this whole equation was the aptitude test itself, the GMAT score, because I don't test well and also I'm not a human calculator. So that discouraged me to apply in the first place. And above that, I didn't find much content online or people talking about having this bad GMAT score and making it anyway in a school and eventually a job that works for them. So that's what I'm doing here, sharing with you how I used my poor GMAT score and still got into a school that helped me step into the career that works for me. For une raison qui m'échappe, I was already interested in the French language and moving to France in the first place. I was a starry-eyed South Indian boy wondering what it would take for me to move to France and polish my French to fluency. That was my advantage. I found working on French to be fun. I have my weakness, but I also have my strength. I speak English fluently enough. I express myself conveniently enough. Communication is my forte, at least in the English language and now even French. But according to the GMAT, I, I don't. So let's move on and get a job. So stemming from my interest that Advantage I spoke to you about, I reached out to Alliance Française and Campus France just to ask them if there's something that I could do to help them. I was still an engineering student at this point and I was thinking that they would probably not reach out to me, you know, but they did. They reached out to me when they had a couple of business schools and engineering schools from France coming to India. This was back when I was in my third year of engineering. They reached out to me saying that the maitre d' at the hotel where this event will be is the only one that speaks English. The staff that are serving and the people who will be served don't speak each other's language. So every time that there was a need, I showed up. So I started speaking with the people from these business schools and with people from Alliance Française and Campus France. We were not best friends, but we knew of each other's existence. <laughs> so after my final year of engineering, I got this email again asking if I would be available to come and volunteer. I was living in Bombay now, but also along with that came another email. Do you want to study in France? It was at this point when I'm not brave enough to speak about it with everyone, family, friends, and so on. But it's been in my head and I've done a couple of Google searches. I've thought about it. I just don't know how to get it done. I was a, a volunteer over here. I should go and get the benefit of what these schools are here for. So I, let's just go and see what happens. At the event, I meet Eric Business School and I had a really nice catch up with the guy who told me that mine was one of the best profiles that he had seen. And I just thought at that point that he says this to everyone possibly and I didn't think much of it, but I got an email from him asking to apply and I confessed on, on my email saying that I don't have the 150 euros you need to finish this application. So he sent me a link where he waived off the application fee and I was like, well, it costs nothing to apply. Let's just apply. So I spent a good week breaking down the blocks of a cover letter. What does it take? What's the first part? What's the middle part? What's the last part? What do you have to put into these things? Which topics you should not miss in your cover letter? These kind of things. Once I had it, I put it in the French that I knew. This was not perfect French. It was just the French I knew back then. Um, I used Google Translate for the nouns, but for the sentences itself, I did not perfect. It. I showed it to a couple of my French speaking friends, my French friends back in the day, who laughed at it, but they said, we understand what's happening and that's all that I needed. So it was one of the most peculiar cover letters they would have received because it's so imperfect. And I addressed the imperfection towards the end, saying that this is how I learn stuff. 
it's not perfect for a while and then it just gets acceptable at some point. If you take a shot at me, then my French will immediately get good enough and I'll get a job. I'll be one of those numbers in your school that gets a job. Filled out all the dossiers that they asked me to f fill out and I had officially applied and I forgot about it for a couple of months until December when they reached out to me saying that we want you to come to our school <laughs> and they took their bet at me. They gave me the C. I honestly didn't believe it because I thought you have to give the GMAT first. Without that you have, you know, how did I get this, right? There was a little asterisk in the offer letter. They said that this offer letter is valid if you have a minimum of 550 on your GMAT. So now my next challenge is to get a 550 at least on the GMAT. And we're end of December. So I just had Christmas break, New Year break. Come early January 2016, I need to get this GMAT thing done. I already booked the test because I had to. It was for the 20th, 22nd January, something like that. So I have like two or three solid weeks to ramp this up. Well, I studied engineering, so I know some kind of math. I know some percentages. I just can't do it as fast as the GMAT expects you to do it. But given the time, I knew I could do it. My English was pretty good enough, but I did not have 55,000 synonyms for the same word because I feel it was unnecessary. I'm sorry I'm trashing on this exam, but looking at the syllabus, I was just thinking this is so unnecessary. But I got a Mago subscription and for a good two to three weeks, I just focused on practicing these problems and just, you know, getting ready for the exam. You know what it feels like when your whole life's worth or value, all that you've studied these years is predicated on one exam. And if you screw this one thing up, you are so useless. <laughs> I don't think anyone was saying this to me, but you know, this is this is how it feels. If this is that one key to your ticket and you can't do it, that's what I was feeling at that point. When some of my friends were doing pretty well in their professions already, getting out of their bachelors, I wasn't really enjoying my engineering thing. And I was like, I need to take one bet in my life, this one. Yeah, it's, it's a big financial bet. I need to take one, but really think it through and not fail this time. So that the job that I get after this, that I will like it. So all my research went into what kind of jobs will I get? So I was really sure about this. And the one thing that's standing between me and that was the GMAT. And this is a slippery slope. Of course, a good GMAT score attests to the fact that you're smart. And of course it gets you into a network of other smart, capable people who will get nice jobs. All of that is true, but your success at a profession is not predicated only on this one number. Calculating fast and memorizing an obnoxious number of words is not a guarantee for a happy, thriving career. A positive attitude and a good self image that you can learn is what matters, in my opinion. Finally, on the GMAT day, I woke up early and came really early to the test center to make sure I don't get stuck in the Mumbai traffic. And the four hour exam, I was just gunning the screen, probably not blinking as much as I should be. And I end up with a terrible headache. And then the screen starts loading. I reach out to my bag with the permission of that invigilator who wouldn't let you move. Reach out to my bag for a paracetamol and a water. I knew I'd need the paracetamol with all that focus. Uh, so I gulp down my paracetamol while the screen loads and it says 550. <laughs> I was so overjoyed. I couldn't believe that that it had finally happened. It kind of felt that nothing's gonna stop me. Anymore. Of course, the finance part was not figured out yet. But this was a huge victory for me. I pulled out my phone immediately and I sent an email to my school saying that you will soon get the official score from Pearson Review, but I got in. I got the 550 you asked for <laughs> and they were like, yo, dude, that was so close. Supply and demand, my friend. <laughs> and then I stepped out to Bandra to have a nice biryani in celebration. I had made it. So there's one thing that you'll take away from this video, it should be this. The reason the GMAT score is attractive is because not many people can achieve it. So it is a um, measure of your persistence, of your learning skills. But if you can show that in another way, maybe you don't get into Stanford or Howard without an excellent aptitude score, but that doesn't mean that you can't be happy in life. So if you get the prestige part of a business school of a top Ivy League school out of the way, if you can compete for it, by all means, you do you, enjoy your life. But if you're someone like me who could not compete for those because of your poor aptitude and not testing well, for example, then you need to know that that's not the only recipe for happiness. That's not the only recipe for a career where you enjoy what you're doing. If you feel that you're only being judged 
by your intellect by your computability by your memory in the place where you're at then you need to compete elsewhere this is what my profile looked like when i applied if this is any help for you i did not see it back in the day but the guy from edx saw it and said that my profile was brilliant all i had shown him was my cv at that point and we had spoken for a good 15 20 minutes about what my interests are and how i like to spend my time and that was sufficient for him to out so much and eventually wave out my application fee and i think the consistency in my investment in the french language in the past couple of years is what really spoke to him that i'm not someone who easily gives up all i had was my cv and my letter of motivation since i knew the schools that were coming in i already did my research on which are the schools where would i ideally see myself i wrote myself my letter of motivation and i came prepared when i came to meet this guy they then had an interview with me later on and i think they were really curious to see if i really speak that way so we started the interview in english and at one point they asked me to switch to french and of course because i had done this myself i did work on it i did work on presenting my introducing myself présenté j'avais déjà travaillé comment je devrais me présenter c'était pas si compliqué que ça parce qu'il y avait que deux trois trucs que je devrais maîtriser avant que je me prépare pour cet entretien the school took a bet on me i learned the language eventually and i landed myself a happy job and so can you so whether you're planning to move to France for your MIM or you're not sure about France or MIM, then definitely subscribe because I'm going to make a couple of more videos in this series. Anything specific you want me to talk about in this limited series, leave a comment and I will get to it in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and keep learning.